Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It is Tuesday night and we're going to create some art. It's going to be awesome. Um, welcome to the show. Uh, a couple of people already in the room. I see Creative Boredom's in here. We got OK Larry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump right in on this one. I'm not going to like do a big old intro or anything like that. Um, well, actually, a small intro. Um, so I, I mentioned recently that uh, I was commissioned to create uh, some labels as part of an art project, part of a fundraising thing for a local um, uh, art uh, like organization. Uh, the challenge is to decorate these maker's mark bottles uh, with some sort of art. So I sent in a um, like a proposal, like a, a design, and um, I, I actually sent in two of my coffee art paintings uh, to, uh, to like, you know, for evaluation. And um, actually I sent in three, sorry, <laughs> I sent in three uh, three of my coffee paintings and they said yes. Uh, and, um, I am now commissioned to create, uh, two of these bottles, um, somehow, some way. And, um, uh, and that's what we're doing tonight. So, uh, the second part of this is that I did submit three and I wasn't really sure which of the three that I was going to do because I'm only supposed to do two. Uh, so I put up a poll on the community tab and asked you guys, the viewers to pick for me. So, um, Long story short, you guys came through, and I really appreciate that. And uh, these are the two that you guys picked. So somehow we're going to create coffee art paintings of these two things. We're going to recreate these um, in a much smaller version so that they'll fit on the bottle. Uh, and I think it's going to be kind of challenging because there's a lot of detail here. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure. It's, it's obviously not going to look one-to-one -one because this was a much larger picture. I think I did those at 12 inches by 18 inches, so there's a lot more room there. Um, but I did, you know, commit to doing smaller versions of these as labels. So that's what we're going to do. And, um, without further ado, we're going to jump right in. So in order to do this, uh, I had to, uh, think a lot smaller. So I went off and I picked up some really small, uh, Strath for Strathmore <laughs> watercolor paper. Um, this is five uh, and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And then if you look at the bottle here. So I need to decorate this side, and then I think I'm going to do a little bit of decoration on this side too. The one thing I'm not allowed to do is I can't cover up this label because this has some like legal information on it, like the proof, um, some information about the like you guys can look this up. It's called the Lex Arts uh, Artisan Blend Whiskey Wall of Wonder 2024. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'm commissioned to do two of these bottles. I can't cover up this label, but I can cover up like I can put something here. And I can put something down here if I want to. And then obviously I can decorate back here. This is what I, I agreed to do. I, I said I, I would create a label for this. So if you look, it's the perfect size. So we're going to end up cutting off some of this uh, up at the top. And then we're going to fix this watercolor paper to this. As you can see, I've got two of them out right here. Um, so the animal itself, I think, is going to fill up this backside. And then I think... Like um, the two that you guys uh, uh, selected for me to do was like an owl. Let me go back to that real quick. Um, you guys selected for me to do the owl and the deer. So I think, um, let's see, go back to this. So I think the owl will go back here. And then here on the front, I'm going to do like a small owl in flight. And then when I do the deer one, the deer will go back here and then on the front, I'm going to do like a little small like deer, like in a woods or something like that. So I, that's the plan. We're going to see how it goes. Um, the real challenge, though, as you might imagine, is that this is really small paper, right? So how am I supposed to get all these details in here? I have no idea, but I'm going to jump in. I'm going to start painting. Um, feel free to chat with me while I'm doing this. It's supposed to be fun and interactive. Um, you know, we're still chatting like usual, even though I'm actually professionally working here, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to put we're going to put our little dude up here. He's got a chair now. So we're just going to have him up here coaching us along. There you go. Get him in, get him in the shot. He can step on the paper. It's all fine. All right. So I'm going to start on the owl, I think. So I've got both of them here. Both of them need to get done. Um, actually, let me go ahead and start on the deer just to get an idea. But anyway, I'm just going to jump right in. You guys can feel free to chat with me. I don't know how this is going to go. I think I'm going to have a lot of trouble actually getting some of these finer details in. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like, they understand 
that no two pieces of art are exactly the same. Mostly I'm starting over here so that I can reach across because I'm a, I'm a right-handed person. Um, they realize that no two pieces of art are exactly the same and they're totally cool with that. I just have to get a pretty close to the design I submitted so that I feel comfortable that I did my work. But I think that's all, you know, it's such a small area. It might actually go super fast. Um, the next step is when I'm done with this, I have to, I have to fix it to the uh, bottle somehow. And I've got some special glue that's supposed to work well on, oh, and I have my bourbon here, by the way. This is my real inspiration. So I have some special glue that's supposed to fix it to the glass really well. Um, so I'm not too worried about that part. That's, that's going to be challenging because I also want to create like a wrap so that it goes all the way around. You guys are going to be able to see every step of the process, like whether it's live or like pre-recorded or something like that. You, you guys will be able to follow along. But in hindsight, I didn't think about how small these labels were actually going to be. And I kind of wish I had um, committed to doing like an ink drawing instead. Because then I could use pens and stuff, and I think it would be much better. But I do have these small brushes, so I think it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm crossing my fingers underneath the table here. So, anyway, how's everybody's week's been going? Oh, oh, we got some uh, more people in here. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't even paying attention to the chat. We got Kevin in the house. We got uh, two turn, two, qu two, <laughs> two, 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 two turned to quit. Yeah, that's Tyler. Hey, Tyler. Pretty sure that's Tyler. Um, got MJ in the house. We got Kid in the house. We got Richard in the house. And we got our creative boredom in the house. So, cool. Nice to see you guys. Hopefully, you guys, uh, week is going well. Um, creative boredom says, I think the easiest way to do this is by making the implications of tiny details while only truly including the big ones. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. You can imply that there's a lot more detail in this than what you're actually putting in. And the other thing is, um, you know, like, we're still going to put in our cool little coffee effects. We're going to put in our splatters and stuff like that. I think that'll really go well here as, as well. It'll end up looking nice. I'm confident. Plus, I've got plenty of paper, so I bought, bought a pack of 12. <laughs> so, like, if I screw this up, I'll just start over. Um, kid says, uh, these bottles are going to be great. When do they auction them? I think in April, I'm not 100% sure. I will let you guys know for sure though. Um, my understanding is that the two bottles are because one's a public auction and one's a private auction. So you guys could even bid on these if you really wanted to support a good cause. I wouldn't recommend it unless you have like plenty of money because the ones from last year, I think they went for like $700 a bottle. Not last year, but uh, 2022, I think, was the year. Um, so they can get pretty pricey. So if you want to support me, um, probably if there's cheaper ways to do that than buying one of these bottles. But if you want to support arts in Lexington, you know, it, it's not a bad cause. Like, I do recommend that. So I think what I, so I'm doing a little bit different than what I usually do. Usually I start with, like, a big puddle of mess and, like, let it drain. I think I'll get to that, but I want to kind of... Um, sketch in where all the elements are going to be first just so that i feel comfortable that um all of the uh the stuff is going to work i feel pretty comfortable actually already like how bad can it be right it'll, it'll work it'll work guys you guys are always worried like why are you guys always worried i tell you these things are going to work no one ever believes me yeah i think it's going to be fine Oh, yes, Larry had a birthday. Happy birthday, Larry. And um, yes, I forgot to reply to your email, um, Larry, but I did get your email. And um, yeah, I'm going to do those puppies for you. So um, just not, you know, while I'm working on this, I got to get this done uh, first. The, uh, the reason I got to get this done is because the, uh, the adhesive I got to uh, affix this to the label, it takes a little while to like cure. So I'm kind of like, I need to get the actual artwork done as soon as possible so that I can affix it to the uh, bottle. So that's the that's the only reason I'm working on this instead of Larry's puppies, which I think would be cool. All dogs are welcome on this channel. Yeah, I, this is going to work. In fact, 
this may take longer than tonight to do just because it's a lot of detail and everything, but I think, I think it's going to work out. It's going to work out because of the power of community. You guys are really making me feel good about this. That's the reason why. And so, you know, it's all right if it's small details. You just have to, like, be very careful with what you're doing. That's all. It's no different than, like, if you were doing a bigger piece. You just have a lot more room to uh, kind of mess up on a bigger piece. Like, I'm not really sure how the splatters are going to work on this. I was thinking, like, when I was looking at the uh, reference picture, they do have those, like, little coffee cup circles in them and stuff. But they look like bottle caps on this. So, like, I don't know. That's the other thing. On this bottle. So, on this bottle, there's going to be, like, areas that's not. Like, he's only going to take up, like, part of this area. So, I'm still going to have plenty of room to, like, put in, like, different effects. Like, the splatter effects and the, um, and the, uh coffee cup rings and stuff like that. I think that those are part of the style and, and like super important to include. So like to me, that's part of the um, the thing. So this, this, this whole project is just fun. Sorry guys. Oh, creative boredom got to what? Today was very interesting. I got to play a stingray. What? Did you go to um, like a an aquarium or something like that? That sounds cool. Did Larry say how old he is? What 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 birthday is this? Uh, I got the uh, shish grilled shish like oh uh, kebabs shish kebabs. Cool. Yeah, happy birthday, man! I love it when you guys have birthday. That's cool. Yeah, Geppetto's got a new chair. Thanks. He is more comfortable. He got tired of laying around. He probably, he'll probably still lay around in the future and stuff like that. But I like uh, I like giving him options. I think I might actually do a live stream for St. Patrick's Day. I did one last year, and that was kind of fun. I might do that again. So might end up with like three live streams this week just because St. Patrick's Day falls on Sunday. And because it falls on Sunday, I don't really have anything else to do. It's not like it's not like I'd be uh, going out and celebrating all that much. I might go to a parade on Saturday. Oh, um, comic Comic Con! Uh, I was telling you guys I was going to Comic Con over the weekend. That was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, most of those celebrities that um, I told you guys would be there, I only got to see them from like a distance. But um, Joey Pantolino, uh, he played Ralph on, like, The Sopranos, and he also played um, one of the two brothers on Goonies, the bad guys and stuff. Oh, and he played um, Cypher in uh, The Matrix. He was there, and I actually got to talk to him for a little bit. That was cool. Um, got to tell him how much I enjoyed Goonies. You, you young guys, you don't know what Goonies is, but Goonies is awesome. It's like one of the, there's a couple of movies from, like, I was a kid myself uh, in the 80s, like I was super young. But um, there are a couple of TV, sh a couple of movies from the 80s that everybody must see. One of them is Goonies. The other one is Gremlins. That's essential. And then like things like Back to the Future, which everybody actually does see. But some of the ones that people forget to see are like um, Goonies. Like I've got friends that are just a little bit younger than me that don't know what Goonies is. And that's just a shame. I feel like Goonies is a timeless classic. All right, well, got a nice little rack of um, headgear on this uh, this deer here. So the um the ram for those of you guys who picked the ram that was a very close third like I was I was I was like uh see I, I had already sketched out the deer and I'm like oh man this I have no way of ending this poll and it's getting really close here I thought for a moment we might end up having to do the um the ram but just barely just barely did the uh the stag deer come through so 
the stag deer started off pretty strong early and but the uh and the ram wasn't getting much love but you know somewhere in the middle there it ended up um picking up some uh pace there and we almost ended up with the ram i'm, I'm actually surprised more people didn't pick the ram the ram is one of my favorites but you guys all have your favorites and that's what matters yeah the movies and the goonies uh too 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 turt to quit there you go oh you guys are talking about mork and mindy that's cool too Yeah, all right, creative. Uh, yeah, Gremlins and Goonies are great. So what else did you see at the um, a little engine that could is in here? Wait a minute. Who is to turn to quit then if that's not Tyler? Huh. You guys are confusing me today. Um, what's that, Tyler? Uh, what, what else did... Um, yeah, so Bill. Uh, yeah, I did already do the RAM. These are... So I submitted these to uh, do as the uh, bottle. So um, these are ones that I've already done. I'm just duplicating them for this uh, for the bottles. So like this one's going to be a deer that I've already done, and this one's going to be an owl that I've already done, but much smaller. So um, I've, I've done both of these animals before. Um, uh, creative. Uh, like what else did you see at the aquarium? That sounds like a fun trip. Do they have any sharks there or anything like that? I always like going to the aquarium. Maybe they have like whales there or something. That'd be cool. Depends on like, I guess what part of the country you're in. Um, Tyler asked how I've been. I've been doing great. Thanks for asking. How you been? Just creating art. You guys really seem to like that um, that elephant I did the other day, too. So I appreciate that. I might end up doing um, some more in that style. I really like that style of the charcoal and stuff. Um, it's kind of funny. I, I went back to rewatch it, and I'm sitting there watching it. And I'm like, man, this style would be really cool for, like, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. And it's kind of funny because I actually mentioned that during the stream. I didn't even realize it. So I think at this point I have to do, like, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle in it now. Oh, you saw some sharks and eels and otters. Ah, oh, otters are cool, man. Uh, otter is something I would like to draw at some point. That's like right up my alley as far as like wildlife. I really need to do like a fish as well, like a like a like a fish from a stream or something that's like I don't know, like a trout or something that's hopping out of the water. That'd be kind of cool. Um. Do I know what you really love, Tyler? I do not. A mountain goat. That would be cool. Yeah, a mountain goat would be really neat. Um, there's a there's a lot of um, animals that I really want to do in this coffee art style. Um, definitely going to get to them. It, it's just so challenging to do this like small stuff it feels tedious you know like I, I i feel like i feel like this is turning out okay but it's also like time consuming i probably won't get um all of this one done tonight and probably not all the other one but that's okay you guys don't care i don't think you care i hope you don't care Or you can hang out with the otters and pet them. Oh, you should have brought a pen and paper and drawn them. Drawn them? Draw? Drew them? Drew? Draw? No. Yeah, you should have drew them. No, that doesn't sound right either. You should have brought pen and paper and drew a picture of them. There you go. That might be proper English. Must see uh, 80s TV shows. Ooh, that's a good one. So, like, in the 80s, I mean, I can say which ones were popular. I don't know which ones were must see. Um, probably, uh, you know, like, Family Ties. I got Michael J. Fox on the brain. But Family Ties was important back then. Ah, oh, this is the 80s, so that's pretty far back. Uh, Cosby Show. <laughs> that, that didn't age well. But, yeah, the Cosby Show. Uh, Bill Gorman's got an animal, too, and I was like, that's a puppy. 
is cute. Trying to think, uh, other 80s TV shows. Probably, I mean, obviously Cosby was the, uh, the 80s. I'm more of a 90s kid, so I can remember back then. 90s was easy, like, for me. Um, Simpsons? Simpsons had just gotten started. Um, I don't know how many people still watch The Simpsons. <laughs> I kind of give up, given up on it, but it's still playing. It, it's still on air. Uh, it's been playing since the um, early eight, uh, 90s. Uh, Saved by the Bell. I used to watch that when I was a kid. Oh, Duke of Hazzard. Yeah, Knight Rider. Oh, those are great. Buck Rogers? Sure. Buck Rogers must have been like real early 80s though, right? Um, they had Star Trek Next Generation, I think, during the uh, uh, 80s. Hey, uh, thanks, MJ. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think this one's just going to be tedious because it's so small. But it's fun. You know, I'm on a time crunch here. I got to get this done, but I, I, I have plenty of time. I'm getting started early. Like, I still have, like, half a month left to turn this in. Again, I'm mostly concerned about how long it'll take for the glue to cure so that everything's nice and... and I've got to seal this, too, so that it's, like, watertight. I don't know. It's tough being an artist. <laughs> it's mine. It's fun. <laughs> it's all kinds of fun being an artist. It's so weird. I, like, I, I still don't think of myself as an artist. I think of myself just doing, like, little projects. It's just it's so weird to me to, like, actually get projects that, um, you know, matter to other people. Like, I would do this just for fun, and then they kind of, it's, <laughs> I don't know. They want me to do it so that they can um, promote and, sell, like, sell these bottles, essentially, um, for, like, I don't know, like, fundraising and everything. It just trips me out that I'm actually doing that. <laughs> to me, it's just a fun project. Some of the small details in here, I'm trying to avoid just because I'm not sure how I'm going to do those. Like the eyes, for example, I've got to let things dry so that things don't like, like this right here, this is super wet. If I come in here and start messing with it, it'll just end up blending in together. So I do need it to be super dry for some of these details. It's just, I don't know, it's a bit of a challenge. I want to get, let me try to do the eye actually. Oh, Wonder Years. Yeah, what's that? Oh, MacGyver. Oh, man, you got to bring back memories now. Um, Seinfeld, I think, was the 90s. I don't think that was the 80s. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call foul on that one, kid. Seinfeld was a, was a big thing during the 90s. Miami Vice, though. That, that was a big one. Um, was it Don Johnson? It was like his big thing. He had the, uh, he wore the um, the blazer with the rolled up sleeves. That was really big during the 80s. That's funny. Cheers, Dallas. Yeah, cheers, definitely. Um, i trying to think what all my folks watched that I ended up watching just because I was like in the same room or something. Cheers was a big one. They were really into the whole Sam and Diane love triangle thing. No, not love triangle. Well, yeah, I guess it was a love triangle because uh, Frasier... Remember Frasier? <laughs> that was before Frasier was even a TV show of his own. Frasier is probably one of the most successful spinoff series because most spinoff series don't do very well. Like they tried to do a uh, spinoff with Joey from um, Friends and uh, that did not go well at all. Like nobody watched it. Uh, Friends, that was a very 90s show. All right, got a little bit of an eye in there. All right, so this guy, this guy's in a good place to just let him sit. I'm going to move over to this uh, owl just for fun. Like, you guys don't really care, I'm sure. Um, I got to do both of them, so I'm going to wipe my nose because of the allergies uh, with the paper towel because I forgot to get a Kleenex. Ouch. Don't do that, guys. That's painful. All right, so over here on the owl... Which was everybody's favorite by far, by the way. Uh, MASH, Magnum PI. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. 
Yeah, definitely MASH. MASH is part of like TV history, guys. Come on, it was one, like one of the longest running shows. We should have guessed that one earlier. We should do some trivia on here sometime. You guys want to do some trivia? Uh, I'm not prepared for it tonight, but I'm going to put that in my um, in my mental bank of things that we can do while uh, streaming. Just to pass the time, you know. Anyway, this owl is... Uh, this, this owl had like 60% of the vote, I think, when I last looked at it. Uh, the deer the deer was like close second with um, the ram. The ram had like, I want to say 14%. Don't quote me on these. You guys can go and look. In fact, I think the poll's still open because I don't know how to close it. But um, <clears throat> I think the uh, ram had like 14%. The um, Maybe a little bit higher. The deer had like 20%, but the you guys really love this owl. This owl like took took the lead pretty early on and kept the lead like strongly it was like 60 percent or something like that when i last i looked this guy's gonna be so difficult it's gonna be so difficult to recreate this owl at this size because there's so much detail in the guy yeah we can do like movie trivia music trivia harry potter trivia whatever you guys want to do uh, like i'd have to um I'd have to set some up though. Like I can set some up where it's uh, where it's like on my screen and it reads out like questions and um, yeah, we can figure this out. We're smart people. We can we can work this out. Maybe I'll uh, I'll make that a task for Thursday. Don't let me forget. And uh, we can do like a, a trivia Thursday. There you go. who oh, now here yeah I think this is gonna be cool when it's done I'll be happy to get these done you know because I've been thinking about it for a while like like I've been thinking about I did a couple of tests on like wine bottles and stuff just to see how things worked um you know how I can seal it because like you know most art you end up hanging up on the wall like I, I gave away my original um, uh, deer picture and I gave away my original owl picture. These things are hanging up on the wall somewhere, right? This is going to be something that's on a bottle. Somebody's going to hold this bottle in their hand. You know, it's got to um, it's got to be something that stands a, a little bit of wear and tear, you know. So there's like some more thinking involved in, in this than like usual. Hill Street Blues. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's your favorite type of music to listen to? That's a great question. I'd love to hear from you guys, like what, what some of your favorite mu music is to listen to. Um, mine is largely depending on the mood I'm in and like what I'm doing. So if I'm studying or working on something or programming or, or something like that, I want something without lyrics because um, lyrics are, are like distracting. Um, so I would listen to like, you know, um, there's some there's some good stations on YouTube like Chill Hop, um, I don't know what's called now, but like Lo Fi Girl, um, that's like a nice little animated girl with a little kitty cat, and she's just sitting there studying and stuff. I listen to that kind of stuff all the time. Um, that's really good just to uh, to chill out and relax and stuff like that. Um, I like covers of songs. Um, I especially like female vocals. So like if there's a a female vocalist singing a song that I recognize, I'm really into that. So like, um, and it, it doesn't even have to be like a famous singer or anything like that. It can be, it can be like just somebody practicing on YouTube or, or, or whatever. Um, but as far as like covers go, there's a, there's a group I really like. It, I mean, it's not for everybody. It's for me though. Um, called a uh, postmodern jukebox. And what they do is they do like, uh, old renditions of modern songs. So like, for example, um, there is a jazz style, like 1920s jazz style version of a Snoop Dogg song. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that, that's kind of cool to me. I, I like that kind of stuff. So that's postmodern jukebox. They just do like, um, these odd, like 1950s version or 1920s version of pop popular modern songs. Um, so I enjoy that. Uh, I like a lot of like indie rock, um, 
which is like a bunch of names that I don't even know that you wouldn't know. Nobody knows because they're indie bands, uh, but they sound cool. Um, you know, every now and then I, I do get into like hip hop just when, uh, you know, just to listen to it. And uh, I can't can't think of anybody in particular that I, I can recommend from that standpoint, but I listen to that. Um, I listen to some country music every now and then. Uh, not the depressing kind. <laughs> like, I, I'm not into, like, depressing country music to where, like, I don't know, it, it's like the guy lost his girl, lost his job, lost his car, all of that. No, that's not me. Um, but there's some, like, really upbeat country music that I can get into. Um, trying to think. Yeah, I like all kinds of music. But it really depends on, like, what I'm into that day. Like, whatever I'm doing that day. If that makes sense. But I... I'd love to hear from you guys, what you guys like to listen to. Romancing the Stone. Oh, my God. That was a great movie. Did you ever see the sequel? The sequel was not good. <laughs> uh, Romancing the Stone was great. Um, I didn't really like uh, Jewel of the Nile, which was the uh, sequel. Most people don't even know that there was a sequel to uh, Romancing the Stone. But Jewel of the Nile sucked. I, didn't, well, I don't know. Maybe you like that. I, I didn't care for it. But Romancing the Stone was great. Um, Michael Douglas and... Um, Kathleen Turner, like blast from the past there. Uh, she hasn't really been in much and kind of been hiding out in Hollywood and stuff, but yeah, that, that was a great adventure movie. Um, maybe not quite Indiana Jones, but it, it was a good adventure movie. Has anybody gone to seeing uh, Dune in theaters, like Dune Part 2? I finally got around to seeing Dune 1, and I, I really want to go and see it. I just haven't gotten a chance to. I want to go see it in a nice theater with really good sound system and, you know, a, a huge display. Because it's very, like, it's got those um, panoramic shots of, like, the desert and stuff. I, I think that's kind of stuff that you should really watch on a big screen. Like, I want to see that before it leaves the theaters. I may not get to it uh, this week, but if anybody's seen that, let me know. Behind the stage and can't touch this. You were behind the stage and they can't touch this video on the other side of the wall. Really? Bill Gorman and MC Hammers can't touch this video. That's amazing. Congratulations, man. Uh, because a can was a metal head. That's awesome. Uh, back in the day, I used to listen to like a lot of grunge rock. Um, Kurt Cobain, that sort of thing. <clears throat> Back when I was a wee little Jeremy. Um, we're coming up. I, I know this is a morbid kind of date to uh, to honor, but we're coming up on um, the 30th anniversary of Kurt Cobain passing. That makes me feel old because I can still remember where I was when he passed away. Um, I was at a mall. <laughs> remember malls? <laughs> I guess they still have malls. They're just not as popular anymore. But I was a little... A little mall rat. But, yeah, I was at the mall when I heard about it on the radio, and that was just, oh, that's so messed up. That guy was so talented. He was, like, one of my, all my heroes, like, they, they end up just, like, <laughs> like, I don't know, like, Kurt Cobain, Ernest Hemingway, uh, Jack Kerouac. These, those are some of my favorite writers, by the way. Um, they all, they all live short lives that uh that whole it's better to burn out than to fade away they really took that to heart and it, it makes me wonder like like if those are my heroes what does that say about me that's just very strange to me you know what kind of person am i if like those are my heroes but they're super talented though kirk cobain is so talented um you know, on the writer front everybody knows uh, like ernest hemingway but jack kerouac he was just like a pioneer and um stream of consciousness type writing yeah uh, and he was he was an adventurer you know he spent he, he literally wrote the book on the road and um it was all about his travels but back, you know this was back in the day so you know they didn't they didn't fly around they, they literally got in a car and went on a road trip um and um him and his 
him and his friends just did that like constantly back and forth across the country, sometimes catching like railroads, things like that. Just big hobo lifestyle. I, I love that, that book. It was so in influential on me. Anyway, that's, that's some of my influences, but 30 years, right? 30 years. Jeez. It was uh, 1994 when uh, Kurt Cobain passed away. I had to look it up because I thought it was coming up soon. And I, I double checked it. 1994 in April, I think. So, I mean, like right on the edge of that uh, anniversary. And it's a morbid anniversary. Like, I, I can understand why people don't really celebrate things like that. It's not to celebrate or whatever, but. Bill Gorman says, Cannibal Rising in Haiti. I don't know what he's talking about, but okay. Uh, Creative Boredom Song Doom uh, Part 2. Uh, did you like it? Oh, visually, it looked uh, great to me. Cool. Yeah. I, I really need to see that. Yeah, I mean. I'm sure the story's fine, but sometimes I watch uh, movies just for the, um, the the visual aspect of it. Every now and then you you're, you get lucky, and there's a movie that is both visually great and also has a good story. And I would definitely count Spider Man um, across the universe or across the Spider Verse as a as that kind of combination. Great movie, great story, just all around great. There, um, the, the second part of that, or the third part, I guess, um, is supposed to come out maybe next year? I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. First one was awesome. Second one was awesomer. Awesomer? Is that it? Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm sticking with it. Awesomer. Got a little tiny, tiny little bird here, but it's going to come out all right. <laughs> Forrest didn't shoot himself. Come on, Bill. Forrest died of natural causes. Don't be starting rumors on my show. People are going to come in here and be like, Jeremy said that. I didn't say it. Yeah, this owl... This owl, I think, is going to look really cool when it's done, or it's just going to be a big mess. <laughs> I think it's going to look really cool. This brush is actually working out a lot better than I thought. It's it's not terribly fine detail, but um, I would I would consider this at this scale like a medium detail. Uh, probably like a normal small brush would be like a large on this, and um, this is a. This is working to get in some medium detail, and I think after some of this dries and I kind of have an idea of where everything is, I might come back in and do some even finer detail. It's got to look like my original submission. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly like it, but it has to match it so that I feel like I met expectations, which is what this is all about. It needs to meet expectations. Uh, Bill Gorman says, Haiti is now lawless, and there are gangs cannibalizing other gangs, the rise of the zombies. So that's where it starts. I knew it was coming. The zombie apocalypse. You can't avoid it, guys. It's, it's definitely coming. You have to be prepared. This is why I paint in coffee, because like when the zombie apocalypse does come, where are you going to get paint, guys? You ain't going to be able to get paint. In a zombie apocalypse, you have to go to like a convenience store, like um, a gas station or something like that, and pick up some coffee in order to be creative. You know, those zombies aren't going to paint themselves. You've got to uh, improvise and get some. Um, you got to think out, outside the box on how you're going to uh, paint those zombies. A little bit of a dark ring around here. I think as long as I get all the basic features of this owl, I'll be okay. Like like any piece of art, whether it's the big art or the small art, you have to get the really important pieces that help convey to the viewer what this is. So like already it kind of conveys to the viewer that it's an owl. 
but we can get more detail in here. All right, have a good one, uh, Creative Boredom. Hope you have a good time. Glad you enjoyed the um, the aquarium. Uh, Creative Boredom is uh, one of our younger uh, art fans here. Um, he's got his own channel. If you guys ever want to check it out, I always like to support the young guys that are getting into art because, like, you know, I remember back when I was that age and stuff, and uh, I was pretty influential. Uh, like easily influenced by um artists and, and things like that so like i think it's good to like kind of pay it forward to the next generation i think i think creative boredom is going to be an excellent artist someday either that or a stand-up comedian like i said before because he is certainly he's pretty funny yeah he seems like a cool little kid get some uh Get some wings going here. Yeah, I think either I have allergies or maybe I'm starting to get a cold. I don't know. Like, I, you ever feel like you're just about to get a cold? I think now it's the time to get the cold because, like, if I if I get if I get a cold and I put the germs inside of this picture and then I seal it up. That's how the zombie apocalypse starts. Because, like, at some point, they're going to drink this bourbon <laughs> and unleash all that. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Bill says, paint with blood. Draw vampires. I told you guys that I went to that one gallery, and there was a painting there that wasn't blood. And, um, yeah, that's kind of gross, man. Like, it was a big painting, too. It was, like, huge. Uh, kind of life-sized. Uh, and, um... It was painted in the artist's blood, and I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's just kind of gross. Like, I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. This coffee stuff makes sense. Um, kid says, Ida seems like a sweet kid also. Absolutely. Um, she pops in every now and then. She's, she's commenting on my videos and stuff, so she's still part of the community. But, yeah, I think she's kind of busy. I don't know. The thing about kids is they go to school and stuff, right? So, like, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, you know, I, I think it's great that, that you know, like, the younger generation and stuff watch this show and stuff. And, and it'd be awesome if they do get some sort of inspiration and go on to create really cool art of their own. Um, but also, it's kind of weird to me. Like, <laughs> when I was that age, I was not watching, um, you know, like older people and stuff creating art. Uh, I'm trying to think. Well, that's not true because I was watching like Bob Ross. So like, yeah, I guess I, I guess it does make sense. I don't know. It's, it's always weird to me though that like younger people um, want to hang out with me. Like even my, my own nephew, like uh, my nephew is now in his, I think he's pushing 30. I'd have to think about it for a moment. But anyway, like, even during his 20s and stuff, he wanted to, like, hang out with me and stuff because um, I was the cool uncle and everything. And it was always weird to me that, like, he did want to hang out. I'm like, man, I'm literally old enough to be your dad. Like, why are you hanging out with me? And it, it's just kind of cool, you know? I like I like hanging out with my, my nephew and my nieces and stuff like that. They I feel like they keep me young hanging out with them. I do appreciate it. I think it's cool. And I, I just appreciate people coming in here and having a good time anyway. So, like, it, it always it always surprises me that people say they learn things from this show because I don't really, that's not really the focus for me. It's like, I don't feel like I have a lot to convey. I try. I try to convey what I'm doing and everything, but it always surprises me when somebody says that they actually learned something. I, I feel like some of the stuff I go over is... um. It, it, it's just like what I'm doing, you know? So like, it surprises me that people actually learn from it, but um, yeah, Tom, I am the cool uncle. I really am. Hey, we are missing hater tonight. What's up with that? I saw Rome earlier today in the comments. I don't, I don't know what he's up to. Yeah. Haters usually uh, in the house too. That's okay. People come and go. It's almost like people have lives. I know I don't have a life, but other people do. And they tell me that they they enjoy their lives. So I think that's cool. 
but yeah, like I do, I do like it when like students show up, you know, because like that makes me feel like I'm doing something uh, useful and I'm not, and it's not just about me. Right. So like I'm in here drawing pictures because I really enjoy drawing pictures and um, you know, I think I am getting the cold. Um, doing them live, uh, I enjoy drawing pictures and doing them live and stuff helps keeps me keep me accountable to doing them every week. Um, but it, it really makes me happy that other people get stuff out of the the show too. So like if somebody comes in here and they do actually learn something or if they do kind of see it like, you know, that I'm like a mentor or something or or something like that from their uh, on their artistic journey. That makes me feel good that like that's awesome that's something i didn't expect you know like that's cool how, how do you get more of that like I, I would love to be like an art teacher i guess uh i guess i have to become better at art to be an art teacher but that's that's definitely like one of my new goals like that'd be kind of cool like at some point i might um actually create like some uh lessons or something like that and do individual videos for them i don't know the sky's the limit for now, I'm just creating art for the sake of creating art. But I think about things like that, like how, where do I want to go with this stuff? And, you know, the better I get, the more I feel comfortable instructing others. So it's definitely in the cards. I enjoy it. it gives me a lot of a uh, sense of purpose, I guess. I don't know. That's, I struggle with that, you know, like um, other people, everybody has a you know, something that gives them purpose. Uh, usually it's family, you know. Uh, I don't have any children of my own. I've got dogs and stuff, and they give me purpose. But, you know, some of those traditional things that people have in their lives that give them purpose, like family, religion, um, you know, things like that. I don't really have a lot of that. Um, so I have to make up reasons. <laughs> like gotta make up things that give my, my life purpose so things like uh helping others and stuff really really help with that you know like if i can if i can help somebody else on their journey that makes me feel good yeah see this is actually starting to look good it's starting to look like i mean it still needs a lot of work i uh uh, but I can show you the original and show you this and you'd be like, yeah, okay. That looks like, uh, um, it's like I'm doing mini me. Oh, Kevin says, um, take zinc if you feel a cold coming on, but the tree pollen is high right now. Yeah. And I was out earlier. I was out all, all the day and it was so nice out. I had the windows down. I'm thinking it's probably like allergies because I get those really bad. And it only seems like a cold because I'm using a paper towel to wipe my nose because <laughs> I don't have any tissue here. <laughs> obviously I don't care, you know, I felt like if you guys were going to judge me on my social graces, you would have done that already. So I appreciate you guys not giving me crap. Um, giant butterfly mosaic collage, use pen butterfly. That would be a cool piece of art. Uh, kid says, yes, Larry, England does not move their clocks forward until last Sunday. Oh, they do move their time. I didn't know that. Yeah, we had a time change the other day. I was not expecting that. So we had a time change this weekend. I went to Comic-Con this weekend. It's been a busy, busy couple of days, guys. I wasn't just at Comic Con either. I was like, I was volunteering, so I was there for like a good eight hours. Uh, I went there two days. I was supposed to do three, but ended up not being able to make it to the third one. But it was kind of cool. I saw, um, you know, like everybody cares about the celebrities, but for me, the artists were cool too. So like, there's a bunch of, I don't want to call them no name artists. Um, but they really are. They're not like famous people or anything like that. What they are, they're local artists who make their own independent comic books and stuff. And I think that's so cool. Um, those are the comics I collect. Uh, this bookshelf back here actually has not a lot, but there's a small stack of comics. Uh, and most of those are ones that I picked up from, uh, you know, artists where, you know, I get to talking to them. It's a great conversation. I'm like, hey, I just want to support you. Let me buy your book. Um, and it's usually like $5 or something. It's not, 
you know, it's not a lot, but in, in the least, it's got like a souvenir of being at Comic Con. But also, it's like I, I feel like I've collected, you know, enough of these where I have like this collection of artists and, and everything. It's almost like getting autographs and stuff. It, it's kind of fun. And again, most people don't know who these guys are and stuff, so it's not like the collection's worth anything. But to me, it is. You know, to me, it's like my collection of local artists whom I support, and I, I just think that's cool. I would love at some point to create my own comic book. Um, just for fun, just to see how it goes. Uh, because again, says, hopefully we all teach each other things. Yeah, I kind of feel like that's just the way life works, you know? I feel like, um, I feel like we do that whether we want to or not. Like, we get, whether we want to or not, we get thrust into positions of, um, responsibility where we're kind of where we kind of have to like we become parents or we become uncles or, or something like that and you know like maybe we weren't cut out to be a leader or a role model or something but because we have little kids that depend on us we have to be and uh that's just the way it goes and it's a good thing you know it's not a bad thing there's no downside I gotta get this little fluff here. Um, what I like, there's a couple of things I like about the owl that I don't know if I'll be able to get the small details in on this one, since it's so small. But what I really like about the owl is on the nose, there's like little fur that comes in on the nose. That's gonna be like microscopic here. But the the other thing is I like the fluff that comes out. It's almost like a cape that he's wearing, and um, or she, and uh, it looks really cool. So I'm hoping to get some of those details in at least. I may not get everything in tonight, but on this uh on this part, I think I can expand into like a larger brush. Let me try this one. I wanna I wanna get some of that blotting stuff that I usually start with going. It doesn't have to be much, but for these, I want all of the normal features of these uh watercolor or not uh Sorry, coffee paintings to be in there just like they would be if they were the bigger pictures that I do so with that in mind I do want these like little pools of stuff and if I can get these things going I want those to kind of stream down let's see how this looks gotta move all my stuff off and get all my toys off let's see if gravity will help us out here I may need bigger pools of stuff but See if I can get that going. Uh, a little bit more gravity. Come on. There we go. All right, so I got a little bit of a string going over here, so that's cool. This one's pulling okay. Um, I think I just need a little bit more going in there. But I do want these things in here, even though... Oh, and that's the reason why I didn't tape the bottom here, by the way. Um, it's because I do want that kind of stuff. Usually like when I do these, I have tape down at the bottom and then I end up with like a little bit of a, like a lip there where there is no coffee. Here's the coffee all over the place. Got to clean up after myself. Um, I didn't want that for this one. So we have a lot of owls, uh, here in Northeast Florida. Cool. So Northeast Florida, so you're up like, um, That'd be like Fort Lauderdale. Oh, Northeast Florida. So you're up there by like Southern Georgia and like the Okefenokee Swamp and, and things like that. That makes sense. I used to live in Georgia when I was a kid. I loved it there. I, I love the, um, the coastline through there as well. Um, some of my favorite places are all down to, not necessarily Florida, but, um, if I if I had a billion dollars or whatever and can like live wherever, um, down through Savannah slash Beaufort, South Carolina, Charleston, those type of places, I would love to live there. Again, that comes from like days of being young, Jeremy, where um, I lived in I lived in the South and. I was in the Boy Scouts and stuff, so we went around to different places, went camping and stuff. I always liked um, that area. Savannah, Beaufort, Charleston area. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. Like, uh, I, 
I don't remember because I was a little kid, but we, and this is really killing me on the gra the gravity here. Come on. Come on. There we go. Uh, there we go. That's a, that's a nice little. All right. So I'm going to let that be and stuff. And I might tinker with this some more. I feel like I'm pushing my luck on this though. All right. Um, yeah. So like, uh, I don't remember because I was a little kid, but I think I went to the Okefenokee Swamp down there, and it is awesome. Uh, and then you have, like, the Everglades, but I think that's further down in um, Florida. I, I don't remember all my geography. I used to live in Florida, um, in Central Florida. Thanks, uh, thanks MJ. Um, I used to live in Central Florida, so, like, between um, Orlando and Tampa. That was, a, that was a while back, though. That was always nice, too. I don't, I don't know if I like Florida as much as I used to. Thanks, MJ. Like when I was, um, uh, ironically, like, okay, so like, I don't think it's no big secret. Like a lot of people move there to retire because the weather is always great. Um, so you have like a lot of older population down there. Um, it, it's, it's kind of ironic for me because like I enjoy it. And there's like little cat hairs in here. I'm trying to get out. I don't know how they got in there. There you go. I think I got it. Oh, well, cat hairs becomes part of the bourbon bottle. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention one of the um, one of the things that go along with this. So, like, there are 10 bottles. So, like, all the bottles are accepted now. It's like I am I am commissioned to do two bottles. So they're accepting my two bottles, whether, well, I, I mean, I guess they can reject it if I, like, totally don't, you know, deliver. But for the most part, they're going to accept my two bottles, right? But there are 10 bottles of the 200, I guess, total bottles. 10 of those bottles end up in the Maker Mark Museum. Now, that would be awesome if mine get accepted into that because that's like the best of the bunch, I guess. So if mine get accepted in that, and I don't have any expectations that it will, but if it does, then not only can I go and see my bottles myself, anybody can go and see my bottles if they visit the Maker's Mark Distillery, which is cool. Because then I can, like, brag about that, you know? Because, like, we all need something to brag about in life, you know? So that would be cool. Anyway, yeah, so, um, yeah, I lived in Central Florida for a little while. It was okay, but I, I anyway, my point was that I kind of grew out of it. And it's, like, so weird because a lot of people move down there. When they get older and stuff like that, the older I get, the less... <laughs> The less um, the uh, Florida that I was into kind of appeals to me, like, you know, party Florida and stuff like that. Plus, it's so hot down there, guys. Man, jeez. I guess you get used to that. Yeah, you do get used to that. I just remember it. It was so muggy all the time, every summer. You do get used to it, though. Where is the Maker's Mark Museum? That's a great question. It's somewhere here in Kentucky. I don't remember exactly where the Maker's Mark uh, distillery is, but, uh, well, it probably says on here. Um, Loretto, Kentucky? Yeah, Star Hill Farm, Loretto, Kentucky. I don't know, Kevin probably knows if he's still in here, but yeah, it's somewhere around here in Kentucky. So, uh, Kentucky has like a bourbon trail, which is basically all the different distilleries you can go and visit. Like, if any of you guys ever come to Central Kentucky or just, like, anywhere in Kentucky, I highly recommend taking a, taking a tour of that bourbon trail because it is kind of cool. Like, there's only so many things we're known for around here. One of them is uh, bourbon. The other is horses. You get to see a lot of that um, when you go on one of these tours. Like, I'm not here to sell you on tourism of Kentucky or anything like that, but uh, it, it's not bad, you know, like. There are some other states that are probably a little bit more interesting, but if you if if you're into bourbon or you're into horses, this is a nice place to visit. Definitely, if you're coming, um, you know, plan ahead and come during some of the horse racing, which is kind of cool. South of Barstown, yeah, there you go. Which is out near uh, Louisville, if uh, anybody is not from around here. Yeah, there's some uh, there's some distilleries that are closer to me. That's why I don't really know where Maker's Mark is. Um, like that's probably like an hour and a half to two hours away to go and visit. But I'll do that for my own bottle. Like if they put my bottle in that museum, I will go and visit. <laughs>
but yeah, if you if you guys want to come out and visit and stuff, uh, plan ahead. Make sure that you're here during uh, racing season. So there's um there's a couple of places where you can uh, participate in that. There's um you know there's there's the big one, the Kentucky Derby. Everybody knows about that one. But then there's also like the spring meet at uh, Keeneland here in uh, Lexington, and there's a fall meet um, as well. And it. And they're both, uh, Keeneland's a really nice venue for horse racing. Like, you can go out there and you can basically, like, get cozy with those horses almost. I mean, you can't really. Like, you can't go up and pet a horse or anything. But you're, like, really close to them and stuff. So, like, you kind of, you can kind of tell whether or not they're going to, like, perform well or not. And uh, it's just a really nice racetrack. So, I, I, I really like Keeneland. Um you know, Churchill Downs is Churchill Downs. Uh, Churchill Downs basically looks the same as it did during the 70s. <laughs> like, um, like it's okay. Don't get me wrong. And I, I'm not going to, like, beat it up too bad. But um, definitely the environment that it's in and stuff is, like, old town, like, Louisville. You know. It's, um, there's a, there's a great Hunter S. Thompson piece on going to watch, um, you know, the Derby. And the funny thing is... It was written, obviously, back during Hunter S. Thompson times, but it's still relevant today. So I don't have it in front of me, so I can't quote from it. But just look up Hunter S. Thompson on the uh, Kentucky Derby, and that's pretty much it. That said, it is something we're known for, so I recommend coming out to see it. Hey, Realm Dog, we were wondering about you earlier. Nice to see you. Del Norte is north of Santa Fe. Thanks. Oh, um, let's see. Sorry. Uh, alligators are speed bumps. I don't know what Bill's talking about, but I'm assuming that has to do with Florida. Uh, Kid says, museum, that will be cool. Yes, very much. Uh, if it's accepted. There, Like I said, there's only 10 bottles, and there's some really good artists. I saw some of their other work. Um, so the bottles are on a whiskey wall. Ah, yes. Um, I think that's the whole idea. Um yeah, basically these bottles, they're, um, I don't know what they're normally worth. Like, this is, I should let them know that I'm basically talking about this, because this is probably good for promotion. Um, this is their Maker's Mark Private, oh, sorry, Maker's Mark Private Selection, right? And um, I don't know what that means, but it says two baked American Pure, three seared French Curvet, one Maker's Mark 46, four roasted Mendiant, and zero toasted French Spice. So I guess that's all the different things that go into this blended bourbon. Um, bottle number 96 of 240. So it's a limited edition. And uh, so it's probably got some value of its own. I have no idea what it's worth. But once you put Jeremy's art on it, once you put Jeremy's art on it, it becomes priceless. As uh, Indiana Jones would say, or sorry, Belloc would say in the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, once you put Jeremy's art on it, men will kill for it. It becomes priceless. It is a... Uh, that, that, that's not just a bottle of bourbon anymore. It is, it is uh, an expression. It is a... It is a... Um, well, it's a work of art, guys. You know, how can, you can't really put a price on it. <laughs> well, you probably could put a price on it. They're going to end up putting a price on it. But I am kind of curious. Like, I, I will I will definitely go to that auction if I'm allowed to. I, I really don't know any of the details yet. Like, they may have mentioned when it is. But I'm going to find that out. And I'm going to go just because these all of these bottles get auctioned off. And I think every one of them are going to get sold. So I am kind of curious what my art goes for. Because <laughs> to me... It is priceless, you know. It's a one of kind. Well, there's two. There's two of them. So two of a kind originals of Jeremy's art. You know, you can't really put a price on that. They're gonna try, but whatever whatever these bottles go for, it's not enough. Is basically what I'm getting at. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Um, by comparison, it is for charity, and all the proceeds go to. Um, supporting the arts here in Lexington. 
So people do spend a little bit more maybe than in what it's worth. Um, it's a, uh, it, some of these bottles in the last one, this is 2.0. Mm -hmm. So this is the second one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Open up, bump. That's what you get for chasing the cat. You get a fur ball in you. Um, yeah. So the, the ones last time I think went for like $700 a bottle. So it's not cheap <laughs> and it's probably overpriced, but it's, it's for a good cause, you know? That's why they auction them off. You want, I'm not going to buy it. Uh, if I actually drop this bottle, this is funny. Uh, if I drop this bottle and break it and don't return it, I get charged $500 a bottle. It's, a, it's actually in the contract. So like if I don't, if I just, if I just open this up right now and drink it, it's going to cost me $500. That's funny. So I won't be doing that. <laughs> I wish I was independently wealthy. That would be awesome because I would do that just to like do it. Like if I had like money to burn, I would just open this bottle up right now and start drinking it just to uh, say, I don't care. But no, I actually, I actually like this project. This project is really cool for me. Like I joke, I, I make jokes and stuff. I'm... Everybody? Uh, I make jokes and stuff, but like the truth of it is, I love this project. This project is all me, you know, like bourbon, art. It's like, I really should name this this channel uh, Bourbon and Art, because like that that's my jam, you know? It's like, um, you know, I, I know a, a lot about a little and stuff, and that's one of the few things I actually know a thing or two about, so that's my jam. Uh, Tyler says, Jeremy, I freaking called it. I think he's talking about uh, sports because he was telling me earlier about some of his sports picks. I don't remember which they were. Hey, Steve, how's it going, man? Oh, uh, Mama Q asked, yes, these are for the bottles. Uh, these are for the bottles I'm decorating. So these are two of them, and they're so small because they have to fit in this space, right? So, like, um, I did a poll to see which two of these uh, things I'm going to do. Uh, you guys picked the owl and the uh, red stag beer. So I'm making miniature versions of those that will go on this space here. And then on this space, I'm able to decorate this part as well around this. I can't cover up this label, but I can decorate here and I can decorate here. I think I'm going to make for the owl like a flying owl to put here. And I think I'll probably leave this blank. And then for the deer, I might have a standing silhouette of a deer. Kind of like that red stag I did for the... Um, not red stag, sorry. This is the red stag. Uh, that stag I did for the Harry Potter picture. So I'll just have a silhouette of a deer up there. And I think that that'll look cool. And then, of course, I have to fix these things to them at some point, probably this week. And um, go from there. So that's the strategy. I don't know. I'm kind of playing it by ear. Obviously, I've never decorated these bottles before. Um, so uh, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. The real challenge is that these pictures are super smaller than I thought they would be. Like, I wasn't even thinking about it. Um, but I kind of shot myself in the foot because I committed to these particular pictures. But they are so small. All the details and stuff are so much smaller than when I did the original pictures. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, Tyler's talking about uh, Duke.com, I think. That's what he's talking about. Um, let's see. Oh, he's talking about Cody on it. Cool. Uh, Tyler's really into Cody. Tom says, um, aha, Larry, sadly, it's not enough in my wallet for $700 the bottle. You know, they might go for less. I don't know. I, I think that's what they went for at the last auction. Um, you know, just because they are charities and stuff. It could just because the bottles look really cool. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they might look at my bottle and be like, yeah, that ain't worth my, uh, like, $700. You never know. Uh, none of that money goes in my pocket. So don't feel like you have to buy a bottle to support me. Um, it all goes to uh, support LexArts. Uh, Do not wipe your nose with a piece of paper towel. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Wakes you up, though. Anyway, it's like wiping your nose with sandpaper. Um, 
I wish I had thought ahead, but once you're once you're drawing a picture, you can't just get up and go and get tissue paper. Anyway, I get allergies all the time. I should have thought ahead. I should just keep some here at my desk, but I don't have any at the moment. Anyway, um, all the uh, all the proceeds go to uh, uh, LexArts. LexArts is a really good charity too, by the way. Like um, they are basically behind most of the art projects in town. Like anything on like a citywide level. Um, they do um, a lot of the art shows, and um, they're definitely the people who are behind all the different projects that artists can participate in. Uh, like, I just got an email the other day for another art project that uh, I could participate in if I was Asian, which I am not. Um, this one is just, uh, I'm definitely not Asian. Um, this is uh, for Asian uh, artists specifically to create Asian art. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of stuff that they do is they make, is, you know, they connect people with the art projects. So I think it's a great cause. I, you know, wherever you guys live and stuff, it'd be awesome if you guys had something similar. I, I, I really appreciate them being here in town. So even though I can't afford $700 a bottle, I would really actually do that just to support them anyway, just because they are pretty awesome. I think the problem also with uh, seven hundred dollars of a bottle is I don't want to drink it. You know, like that looks like it, it's, it's taking every ounce of willpower not to open up that bottle and just start drinking it. I, I would love to drink that bottle, um, but when it's a work of art, you really don't want to do that. Anyway, it's kind of funny. Uh, Mama Q says, "Can I just bid on the Harry Potter picture instead?" Hey, Mama Q, I already told you I'll send you that Harry Potter picture if you want it. Just send me a DM uh, and I'll, I'll send that to you. It's just that, um, it's around here somewhere. Anyway, that one's yours. Uh, I try to give at least one picture to all of my, uh, uh, like people who watch this show. And, um, that's one that I just did for fun. So I was I'm never planning on selling it or anyway, so. So you just, you know, reach out. That was yours. You're like the biggest Harry Potter fan that I know. Um, did did you hear about the uh, Max um, series that they're making? I think it's supposed to come out next year, like a total reboot of Harry Potter. That'll be weird. Like Harry Potter without the original cast. I guess that makes sense, you know, like it's been it's been a while. Since the original Harry Potter. I don't know if I'm ready for somebody else playing Harry Potter and Ron and Hermione and all that stuff. But they said that it's supposed to be, you know, true to the books and stuff. So, give it a benefit of the doubt. <laughs> you guys are talking about Wonder Wall. The funny thing is, this is the whiskey, uh, whiskey Wall of Wonder. Isn't that weird? Such a good program. And I wish I could afford this to open up that new bottle. Um, <clears throat> uh, my dad wanted me to mention that uh, I got him to do some bottles as well. He went a, uh, a sculpturing route and he really wants me to show off his bottles on air. And I'm like, well, dad, what if you're like, what if mine don't turn out well and yours ends up looking way better than mine? Uh, why don't you wait and I'll see if mine turn out well or not. If mine turn out good, then yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to show yours. But if mine turn out bad, then no, I will never show yours because that because <laughs> it's the competition. So he made some uh, bottles as well. I'll probably show you those on Friday, probably. No, not Friday, Thursday. Sorry, I forgot to do Thursday streams now. What you drinking, Buffalo Trace? I am drinking um, 1776 uh, by James E. Pepper Distillery. I still have a couple of bottles of that left. Those are my go-to bottles. Um, the other stuff I drink that's a little bit cheaper is a, a brand called ben Benchmark. Um, this is the 1776. Sometimes when I'm on this show, I'm drinking uh, Benchmark. Um, that it's not really well i guess it is technically bottom shelf um it's it's one of the inexpensive uh bourbons 
Um, I like it just because it, it doesn't cost a lot and it, it, it still tastes good even though it doesn't cost a lot. Now, I'm not, I'm not really good at a woohoo, Ernest. Yeah, that's my dad. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, um, I don't really have the taste for like bourbon to be able to tell you like, oh, this is a really great bourbon for this reason or whatever. I just know what I like. So these are just ones that I like. That's all. I'm not here to like tell you guys what to drink or anything like that. Uh, if you're a kid, I'm telling you not to drink. <laughs> you hear that YouTube? I'm actually saying don't drink. Um, anyway, but uh, like if you're an adult, if you're a, if you're an of age adult and everything, then uh, you know you're kind of on your own. I'm not I'm not like a bourbon expert like that. I just know what I like, and I usually like the smaller distilleries. Like I during the um, during the spring and summer, I like to go out and visit some of these. And when I do visit them, I'm more likely to buy theirs, regardless of what it tastes like, you know, just because I visited there and it's got kind of like a personal connection or something like that. Uh, Bill Gorman says, uh, you in Bourbon County? No, I don't live in Bourbon County, but I'm in the Bourbon area, like where they make the bourbons. I mean, kind of a Bourbon County, but it's not the Bourbon County. Uh, back in the day, I think the history of bourbon is that you had to have been, it had to have been made in Bourbon County. I think that was the rule. I don't remember. Or it's not that I don't remember. It's that I don't know um, if that was always the case or if they changed that at some point. So there's some more detail in here. I want to let this dry because I, every time I go to uh, put something in it, it kind of gets muddled. So I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and come back to it. All right, so I feel like I made some progress on this guy. I'm going to go back to this guy. There's no real method to what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like switching back and forth. Ah, my dad's actually watching. He said this is better. His turned out really good. Um, his uh, his uh, bottles ended up um, um, looking really good. He, he went like a sculptured eff like effect where he actually, uh, you know, added a lot to it. it I, I'm... I'm not going to describe it. I'm just going to show them. I'll, I'll show them next uh, week or like next stream or something like that. <laughs> Be sure that you guys see, this is what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to make it a competition, but it is a competition. I ain't going to lie. It was so funny. We both got accepted into it and we were like, what? <laughs> like, cause we were, we were giving each other grief. Like, Oh, mine's going to get accepted and yours isn't right. And like, it's going to be super awkward for you when yours isn't accepted and mine is. We, we were like ribbing each other like that. And then we both ended up getting getting accepted. And um, I posted the picture of me uh, going down and getting the bottles and stuff. But we really both went at the same time. And uh, he got his bottles at the same time and everything. He's already done with his. And I'm just getting started on mine. That kind of shows you how much of a slacker I am. But, yeah. He's, so we got a total of four Maker's Mark bottles in this house that we're responsible for. So like if there was a, like an earthquake or whatever, and the house just fell apart, um, that's a, that's like $2,000 worth of bottles that I'd have to replace. That would be nuts. That's funny. Anyway, yeah, it's a competition and I'm going to win that old man. He ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we are like, I, I don't actually, so who knows, right? But I really don't have high expectations that either of us would be one of those um, 10 models because there's some really good artists in this uh, thing. And uh, I got to see some of the other work that they did. And um, I really don't have a high expectation that either of us will end up being in that uh, that museum, uh, 10 models that were selected and stuff like that. But you know, it'd be kind of cool. We we have this like little friendly rivalry going on where it's like, no, nah, mine's mine's gonna be better. Like the amount of detail that's going in mine blows his away. Like this is this is this is phenomenal art here. His is just sculpture, <laughs> sculpture, the lowest form of art. I'm just I'm really just kidding, guys. <laughs> I'm just actually his look really nice. They really do. I'll, I'll show them off uh, next stream. I did tell him like exactly what I said though. I was like, oh, "What if uh, what if mine end up looking like crap and yours look better? I don't want to show yours off." But mine's turning out okay, so I feel more confident about that. 
Yeah. Um, when I got the uh, email uh, for that was uh, looking for um, artists to submit, uh, I was reading it off to him. And I'm like, look, look, you get this. This. Uh... Yeah, I got my dad to do it too. Yeah. So um, anyway, I was uh, I was showing that email to my dad, and I was like, you know, you should give this a shot. And I was just joking and stuff, but he took me seriously, and he ended up uh, submitting some, and you know, he's in it too. It's kind of cool. Yeah, mine's gonna win though, cause it's so much better than his. So this, I think, is going to be tough because I got a lot of feathers to put in this guy. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're okay. Like, I probably won't get all of this done tonight, but I appreciate you guys hanging out with me anyway as I work on it. I do like... This is actually surprisingly fun, um, doing this, uh, this small, essentially, watercolor picture. Like, I thought this was going to be a lot of trouble, but I'm apparently being able to get some of these details in here. Um, hey, uh, Jeff Dave's in the house. Cool. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Jeff Dave, do you have, fin uh, sorry, Glenfiddich whiskey over there? Uh, fun fact, it means Valley of the Deer in Scottish Gaelic. Uh, hashtag Team Deer. Oh, that's right. He did mention earlier that he is on Team Deer. If you guys want to be on a team here, there's no prize or anything like that, but yeah. All right, let's make this fun. Let's make this fun. You are able to, I guess to this video, no, I'll, I'll make a community post. So I'll make a community post um, where you guys can uh, chime in, you know, via comment and you can say hashtag team deer or hashtag don't, don't do it now. Let me make a post about this. And um, you guys can chime in with hashtag team deer or hashtag team owl. And then the way this will work is I will go to the auction because both of these are gonna be there. Uh, well, they're gonna be in separate auctions, but uh, both are going up for auction, both of the bottles. And whichever one fetches the higher price, whatever team you're on, you guys win. Now you don't win any prize. I, like, I don't, I don't know how that would work, um, but you get the satisfaction of being on the right team. So you can be either on Team Deer, Deer or Team Owl, and whichever one fetches the most amount of money for charity at the auction, your team wins. I think that would be cool. So that's how we're going to do it. And, uh, you know, like if you want to participate, it's just a little fun thing. So much talent in the Parnell family. He, he likes to think so. You guys got to stop filling his head. Um, he really, he, he listens to you guys and he thinks like, yeah, so your, your audience is really going to love my bottles. And I'm like, get your own audience. I actually told him he should, he should start his own YouTube channel because he is, a, he is a funny, so he's in his seventies, but he's a fun 70 uh, ish guy. And he's into so many different things. Pretend like he's not here. He, 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 shut up old man. Um, anyway, uh, he's into so many different things. He he loves to do like pioneer type stuff, um, cast iron cooking, things like that. He would make a great YouTube show. Like, honestly, he's so much more entertaining than I am. <laughs> Tom's on Team Beer. <laughs> make a copy, pick the prize for them, for the whole team. How, how's that supposed to work? See, this is what I'm saying. You make no sense. Go away. Go away, old man. No, he's 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 a lot of fun. He uh he he really likes all of you guys. But I, I do think that he would he would have a great YouTube show, honestly. Like he's into so many different things. Um he's just like uh I guess a Renaissance man. That that that's the term that they have for it. I like to tease him a lot. A lot. We, we we do all kinds of things together. It's a it is a close knit family. Him and my um, my older brother lives local, so like I I do a lot hanging out with him as well. My younger brother, I really like him as well, but he he lives in Maryland, so he doesn't. I don't get to see him as often. Um, but you know he comes into town for like holidays and stuff like that. He's got a he's got one of my new nieces. Uh, in tow, so like it's it's always nice hanging out with him. 
fish is still chilling. I use a cigar box on my bookcase as well. I bet some of us would do pretty well at a Maker's Mark drinking contest. That's the right kind. Of, yeah, that's the contest I want to participate in. Like, if they had made the bottle itself the prize, or like, um, you know, what you get for... Like, if they give you two bottles, you get one bottle for yourself, and then one bottle you decorate, that would have been nice. That would have been cool. But they want both bottles back. So, I'm going to put up the um, the reference picture, which is the originals of this. And uh, I want to show you guys something. So, all right. Have this in mind when I switch to the uh, the actual reference. And so, picture that for a moment. And then look at the originals. And then back at the ones that now... So there's a lot more detail to put in, but I think I'm nailing this. Like these are literally many, many me's of the original. Um, there's a couple little features that are a little bit different, but I think the spirit of it is there. I'm pretty happy with this so far. I just wanted to show that real quick because I am pretty happy with how this is turning out. Um, again, long way to go, but I think uh, in terms of like the spirit of what I was trying to accomplish here, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm nailing it. I still got um, a lot of uh, that little neat um, coffee art type effects that I got to put in, like the little splatters and stuff like that, but I'm getting there. I really like this paper too, by the way, like I should mention that. Um, this is not the paper I usually use. I usually use like a cheap watercolor paper for these, um, these uh, watercolor pictures. Not cheap, but like less expensive um than this uh strathmore and uh, the reason why is I, I like for the bigger pictures to be um you know like on bigger paper and the bigger paper is usually more expensive but since this was a smaller paper i was like well okay i'll go ahead and splurge and get some quality um stuff for it and um uh, i really like the strathmore paper so like strathmore guys send me some more paper and stuff i'll, I'll be happy to plug you guys because your paper's awesome I, um, yeah, if I, I figure like if I give these art supplies or art people, um, art supplies, people like shout outs and stuff, they'll recognize me and send me free stuff. That would be cool. Send me free art supplies. Like I got to reach out to, um, Folgers and ask for free coffee. <laughs> That's my art supplies. <laughs> but now paper. Um, brushes, things like that. That'd be kind of cool. But I, I think this uh, this owl is looking pretty close to the original, which is cool. Um, the original, I don't know if I shared that or not. I think I have a picture of it. The original ended up on an office wall, which is cool. It found a home. It's happy. Happy little owl out there in the world. Yeah, Tyler's been sending me a bunch of songs lately and stuff. He's a, he's he's pretty talented. You guys already knew that, though. All right, let's see. I want to get some, get some more splatter stuff going down here. I don't like this big brush for that, I think. See what happens when, yeah, that's a little bit better. All right, so that's kind of cool. Um, some of the tests that I've been doing in preparation for this. Oh, Lorraine says, excited to see the finished product. So am I. I hope it turned out well. Thank you, Lorraine. Um, some of the tests I've been doing in preparation for this is, uh, you know, I uh, did a little small coffee uh, painting, and then I used, like, the sealer that I'm planning on using for this just to see if a if it if it's smeared or anything like that i think i'm good i think this is going to work out really well again the challenge is you know i have to fix it to the bottle but also seal it up really good so that it's um you know it can be touched right so like most of these uh paintings that i do or drawings or whatever you know nobody's like putting their gr grubby little paws all over it um here 
you know, obviously it's a bottle. Now, I, I guess probably they're not going to be putting their hands all over the picture part of it, but you never know, you know, it's, it's a, it's a label. They might throw it in like an ice cooler. I, I have no idea. They might put it in the fridge to chill or something like that. I have no idea. So, um, obviously it's not my responsibility after it's sold, but also I do care, you know, I don't, I want to, uh, I want to make sure that it's functional so that, you know, they don't, they don't suffer buyer's remorse. I care about the quality of my product. There you go. My product in this case being the art. I, I care about whether or not this art disintegrates when they put it in the fridge. <laughs> it's just a weird, like, honestly, this is one of the things I like about art and, um, you know, I mentioned this when I first started my uh, channel. One of my goals in creating art is, um, you know, like learning different ways of dealing with like problem solving and so on. And uh, this is a perfect example of that because like, you know, how could you predict that you're going to be creating art that is going on a bottle that can end up in a refrigerator, right? That would have never crossed your mind. And here I am trying to problem solve for that, thinking about what supplies would allow a coffee painting to survive in, um, you know, condensation environments and stuff. I mean, it's just so, it, it, it's, it's such an interesting thing when you get down to it. This is what I love about art. Art is, art is creativity, but it's also like analytical and it's 100%. How do I solve some of these problems, you know? And I would say like it's 100% problem solving because like one of the problems that you're trying to solve is how do I communicate that there is a deer in this picture, you know? I think I forgot a uh, horn here. How do I communicate that this is a deer and stuff? So like, you know, part of the just making it look nice and stuff is part of that, you know? Okay, Larry says, I'll make uh, my mark here. If Jeremy makes the contest, I will put $100 towards the bid if someone would do the bidding for a gift to Jeremy. Uh, I appreciate that, um, but none of the money goes to me. So um, I don't know how that would, like you guys are more than welcome to bid on these pictures, but after I submit them, the money's going to LexArts. So if you guys want to donate to LexArts, have at it, but none of the money goes to me. So if you're doing it to support me, I appreciate it, I really do. Um, and you know, thank you very much actually. Uh, but, um, the money doesn't go to me. So, uh, it, it goes to LexArts. So you're supporting LexArts or not up to you guys. Um, Tom says the, the line between art and science is fuzzy. This is exactly what I'm saying. Thank you, Tom. Um, Tom's a cool guy, by the way. Um, if you guys ever get to know him, he is super cool. Um, the, the uh, line between art and science is very blurry. So um, I'm glad you point that out because, you know, this is art. It, it is art. Um, it is creativity. But, um, yeah, there's a lot, there's some science to it as well. And I would argue it's always been that way. So, like, uh, Leonardo da Vinci is probably the best example of that. And, you know, he was a guy who really experimented with different ways of doing things. Um you know, like some of his frescoes and stuff that survive to this day, that's partly due to him uh, experimenting with different techniques. Now, one could argue that, man, freaking cat hair. Um, one could argue that some of his techniques didn't really work very well, like they're constantly having to, um, you know, restore some of those frescoes on the building and stuff to preserve them. Um, it's still it's still a science, you know. At, at least he's still looking ahead. He's, he's thinking to the future um about how how his art might survive the the decades and centuries you know he was he was 500 years ago so literally centuries i just love leonardo da vinci he's he is my uh he's my hero like i don't i don't have a lot of heroes um leonardo da vinci what i know of him at least you know you know you don't really know a person like they're for all i know he he had like um I don't know, some sort of like mental illness and he beat people or something. I don't know. Like, <laughs> but from what I know of Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, at least from the art and science side of it and stuff, I do admire the guy. We'll leave it that way. I, I hesitate to say people are my heroes nowadays because you kind of find out that your heroes are like complete jerks. 
Like I haven't done like a lot of research on Leonardo da Vinci. Don't go, don't go looking up that he had like house slaves or something like that, and you know hold that against me. I have no idea. Um, I just think that like on the science and art front, that guy was pretty awesome. Yeah, it's looking cool. I think this deer is actually going to turn out really well. And I think the owl is probably going to turn out really well, too. So I'm very happy with that. Now I'm mentally moving on to, um, even though I'm still doing the work here, I am mentally moving on to how do I get some of these features in that I really want to get in. <laughs> oh, oh, you're talking about, um, like I would get the bottle goober. Oh, you're talking about buying the bottle so I can drink it. That's very nice. Let's have a party. Let's all get in, get in on this. Like we, we should all get some of that, uh, I think. Um, ha goober, uh, ha kid, the younger generations are on another channel. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> that's funny. You guys are funny. I like my audience. You guys are great. I really feel like like most of you guys have been here long enough. This is uh this has become a bit of a community. Like it's not just my show. You guys come in here to hang out and talk to each other. Hopefully you guys know each other like outside of the stream. That's that'd be kinda cool. You know, we could just buy our own bottle, uh, Ernest, if that is your real name. <laughs> that guy. Um, I am kind of, uh, I am kind of curious what these go for. I am going to look up. So like, I haven't, I, I assume it's in April, so I haven't really been paying attention, but I am going to look up and try to find out when the actual date is. Um, cause like, you know, you guys, I don't know how many other artists participating in this, uh, do YouTube. I think it would be kind of cool if, um, you know, I can go and holler at them maybe and like see if uh, they'll let me live stream the uh, auction. That would be kind of cool if they don't already have plans for that. Um, so that you guys can watch. Because like uh, as much as as much as I think our bottles are going to turn out fine. And I know my dad's turned out really well. Um, like uh, I think uh, I think some of the other entries are going to be just as equally cool. So I'm going to try to find out if they are doing a live stream of that so that you guys can watch. And if they're not doing a live stream of that, I'm going to ask them if I'm allowed to come down and actually live stream it myself. Because I think that that would be very cool. Because I think I, I think you guys would appreciate that because, like, it is kind of cool, you know, decorating a bottle um, of a uh, of bourbon, you know. It's not something people do every day. And uh, I think it would be kind of fun to see the results. Um, uh, one of the other art projects that they've done in the past is, uh, decorating a life-sized horse and they, they called that horse mania. So I don't know when they're going to do another one of those. They just did a recent one, but, um, that was really cool too. Like, cause they displayed those all over town and you could go and get your pictures with them. Maybe I'll show you some of those, uh, that, you know, I got selfies with and stuff, but those were really cool. I gotta make this like he's got like a Jay Leno chin. <laughs> I gave him too much of a chin here, guys. I need to I need to slim up this chin a little bit. You kind of carve this chin a little bit while I'm talking. Sorry, I'm I'm a little bit distracted here. Oh, what were you guys saying? So, um, uh, Jeremy, I feel so bad for our maintenance guy. What happened to your maintenance guy, Tyler? Um. Leonardo is described as kind and generous. Yay! All right, that's my hero. So, like, I'm happy to hear that. Cool. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want you guys to. Uh, I wouldn't want to like pick a hero and then kind of, kind of, like, you never really know with historical figures, you know, because like they lived in their own days and stuff like that. But like, you come to find out that your hero was like a like an asshole. You, nobody wants to hear that. So if Leonardo da Vinci was kind and generous. That's good news. Cool. Because I really do, like, I mean, my understanding of the guy is that he was, like, just this genius. And then, you know, obviously his art was genius, especially for the time. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Cool. So the auction is April 11th. 
meet. Um, my understanding is that there's two auctions, one that's public and one that's private. So if that's the public one, I'm going to holler at them and see if they're doing a live stream for it. They don't really have, they have a YouTube channel, but I don't think they really do anything with it. Oh, it's an online auction. Okay, cool. All right, so you guys will be able to see it. All right, so basically on ele April 11th, if I'm there, maybe I'll go there in person. But even if I'm not there in person, we're going to do a live stream where we're looking at the online auction and seeing how it goes. We're, we're going to figure this out. We're going to we're going to end up watching this um, this auction somehow together, you know, so that we can see how these bottles went. Because like I'm kind of into it, you guys are kind of into it. We're gonna we're gonna sort this out. It's gonna be awesome. Everything is awesome. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the Lego uh, movie. Everything is awesome. It's such an annoying song. You guys know what I'm talking about. The uh, the Lego movie where he's like, "Everything is awesome." It's just <laughs> it's a worse song. <laughs> But that, that it is true. Like, everything is awesome. It's like my theme song. Like, even though I hate it because they played it, overplayed it, it's stuck in my head. Like, somehow that became my catchphrase just because, like, I didn't know what else to say at the start of uh, the live stream. Um, but now I'm like, it's going to be awesome. All right, so I'm going to leave his face for a minute. Let some of that dry. So, that, so the problem is, like, this little pulling stuff in here is, like, really wet. So if I came in and messed with it, it's just going to blot out anyway. So I'm going to leave that guy be for a minute and move back over to the... Um, like, everybody's contributing to the... Uh... Look, if we end up winning a bottle of uh, bourbon, like, somehow we've got to make sure that everybody gets a piece of that. I don't know how that's going to work. Cause I can I'm not gonna drink all that bourbon. I mean, if you guys bought the bottle and stuff, I would, but we'll figure this out. Live stream trivia for short for shots. Um, Bill, we're gonna do trivia on this. That is gonna happen. I have to figure out how that works. So I'm thinking while I'm doing this live stream, I can have trivia questions pop up. I don't know how we're supposed to do that so that you guys don't cheat though. Like I don't trust you guys not to cheat. Because you can use the uh, Google, I cannot, right? So, like, if I know the answer, I can blurt it out. But if I don't know it, how do how do I keep you guys from um, going off and just looking up the answer? It's got to be, like, some way of, uh, you know, doing this quickly or something so that you guys don't have time to, like, really research the answer. Well, well I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to put some thought into this. How do we do, like a uh, like, a trivia during a live stream on YouTube? But we'll we'll figure it out. We'll we'll do a trivia thing. It'll be fun. And he, maybe maybe you guys are allowed to cheat. I don't know. Uh, maybe that'll be fun enough. We'll figure it out. And uh, you know, for something like that, if if we're doing a trivia and there's some way of keeping track of like who's actually winning and stuff, there can be prizes for that. Like I don't mind doing art to um, as, as like prizes and stuff. Emmett must like art. The pieces of resistance. Everything is awesome. Yeah. Where's my bourbon? There we go. You got whiskey glasses to design. Yeah, I got to do some whiskey glasses now. This is this is a lot of fun, guys. But yeah, I think we could do a, um, you know, a trivia. And then like, I don't know exactly how it would work. But, um, you know, maybe, the, maybe we could alpha prize this for that. Because there'd be like one winner. Um, where I do get, uh, like a picture or something like that for, for you guys, which I'm, I'm totally into doing. I, I like, you know, like, I don't, I don't have any money. <laughs> I can't give you money as a prize, but I've got art. I can give you art. You guys are into art. I will, I can offer that up as a prize for trivia. It'd be great. This is what's so weird about like, all right, so you get a, a commission picture. They want you to create something that is like, you know, going on a bottle. You're committed to it. You have to get it done. You have a couple of weeks to get it done. And you're in here making splotches of paint just randomly, not knowing if it's going to ruin your picture and you have to start over or if it's going to make your picture look great. 
the funny thing is I'm erring on the side of it's going to look great and just keeping it kind of random. I, I don't know. I just hope it works out. So at some point, I think when this dries, I'm going to go for a, uh, another, you know, gravity check where I'm trying to get some, uh, some drips. I like the drips feature. Oh, the other thing is, so, so, okay, let's talk, let's talk about the logistics of this. All right. So this is going to be the label. It is going to be glued to this side of the thing. So imagine that being, but you don't want it to look like a square on there. That's going to look weird, right? So what I need to do is I got to tear the edges a little bit. And then I've got to, what I want to do is wrap it all the way around. So I've got to fill in this area here with some, um, hey, cool, you can see myself in it. Um, <laughs> like, sorry. So I have to like fill in some of this area with some torn up pa paper and then some torn up paper through here. So it's going to look kind of like a mummy wrap. That's what I have in mind. So I think that'll look cool. Um, but this being square, I've got to, I've got to de-square it. And then like, also I'm going to lose like a, probably an inch up here, um, where it wraps around the neck of the uh, bottle. So that's some of the other fun challenges. I think it's going to be cool. April 10th of the TTOTC postage stamp day. There you go. Arnold was friends. What? So, anyway, so we've got some plans here. We're going to do like this online auction thing together so that we can watch that. That's going to be cool. Somehow, some way, like even if I'm doing it from home, we're going to live stream that. Uh, I would love to be there in on per, in person if they allow me to and live stream from there. I'm going to I'm going to ask them about that when I return these bottles cuz that would be ideal. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? You get it, not only so like don't get me wrong, I think my bottle is the best. Like my two bottles are going to be the best bottles, right? And then beyond my bottles, my dad's bottles are going to be okay. Like they're going to be passable, like they're acceptable. But there's also some other cool bottles from like other people. I think that's going to be cool. So I'm looking forward to that. And I think you guys would as well. Because it's not every day you get to decorate a bottle like this. So. That said, I, you know, like if, if you're into art, I do suggest you take on a project like this because it really is a challenge. You know, you have to think about how do I fix this stuff to the bottle? How do I preserve it so that when people put their hands on it and stuff, it's not going to diminish? And then you have to think about, like, how people actually treat bottles of beverages, right? So, like, even though not so much with, like, whiskey, most people don't put whiskey in a fridge. You never know. They, they might. They might put the whiskey in a fridge or, you know, under some circumstances, they may end up with condensation on it. Um... But these are things that I worry about with like um, like coffee painting in general. So like if this was hanging in a coffee shop, for example, which is where some of my coffee paintings are planning or I'm planning to take them, you know, it gets kind of humid in a coffee shop anyway. So you're still dealing with the same sort of like problem solving, like, except that it's, it's just like slightly different. It's like, how do I deal with the humidity of a coffee shop versus like, you know, being put in an icebox or something? That makes sense. What are you guys talking about in here? <laughs> Jeremy, have you ever watched Aiton Bilal? Uh, Bilal? Uh, no, obviously not. Uh, I don't know. Is that a sports thing? Um, his images are going to fit and look great on the bottles. Thanks, Tom. Tom's awesome. I like Tom. Tom's my favorite person, Tiff. Um <laughs> Not that you got other people aren't and stuff. I, I just know that Tom is a big fan of uh, Smittix, um beer. And, um, you know, St. Patrick Day is, is coming up soon. So. Kevin says, I'll call the bourbon police on anyone that puts the bottle in the fridge. Right? But, you know, some jackass is going to do it. Somebody's going to put in a cooler or something like that. But, yeah, you're right, Kevin. There's proper ways to... to to drink your bourbon and, and that is not you don't put bourbon in the fridge like it's wine or something like if you want to do that with wine that's your business 
Um, you don't treat bourbon that way. Bourbon bourbon deserves more respect than your your box wine or whatever it is you drink. Sabian Nomad asks, uh, what is bourbon made out of? That's great. Uh, great question. Could that be incorporated into the art somehow? Oh, that's an even better question. Not at this point, but yeah, that's a great question. So um, bourbon is uh, is made of um, uh, corn, believe it or not. So like uh, you have different kind of whiskeys. Um, the defining features of bourbon, uh, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on this, I, but this is my understanding. The uh, there's a, there's actually a really good documentary if you guys have Hulu um, called uh, uh, Neat, uh, N E A T. Uh, I think that's where it's available. It might be available on other platforms as well. But it goes it really goes into uh, great detail on the um, the history of bourbon and uh, why it's so popular nowadays. But anyway, if um, uh, if you're making bourbon, there's two requirements, at least two requirements. One, one is that you have to make it in this region. I don't think you can make it outside this region. But one of the requirements is that you have to use corn. Now, why does that matter? Because other whiskeys are not made out of corn. So like most whiskeys, well, I shouldn't say most whiskeys, other whiskeys in general are usually made out of rye. So that's your two different um, um, types of stuff. And like, there you go. Like as Bill Gorman says, uh, potatoes. So like vodka is made out of potatoes. So you have a bunch of different ways of distilling uh, liquor. And um, for bourbon, it, it's corn. It's usually corn. I, I think it has to be corn, but I'm not really sure. There might be some ratio of corn that has to be in it or something like that. These are things that I don't know. So look them up. But that is a requirement. The second requirement is that your bourbon has to be put in a charred white oak uh, bourbon barrel. So... Um, so you have a cask or like a, a barrel and they put these barrels over these like big torching units. So like they just char the inside of it. And what that charring does is that would, that's what gives you this color. Okay. That color largely comes from it sitting in a charred oak barrel, um, for, you know, quite some time. I don't know how long, maybe it says on this bottle, but it's a long time. So that's a requirement. So there's a certain amount of corn that needs to be in it. I don't know what it is. And it needs to sit in a charred oak barrel for a certain amount of time. And there might be some other requirements. I don't really know. I, I encourage you guys to look into it. Actually, I encourage you guys to watch that documentary called Neat. It, it talks all about all this stuff. And um, some of the distilleries in the area, it's covered in Neat. Um, some, some of the people in Neat I've actually met because I've gone to the distilleries. That they went to and stuff it, it's it's a really good documentary i encourage it to anybody who's interested in bourbon um yeah sorry i'm not an expert on it so i can't answer all the questions uh oh there you go kevin says that at least 51 percent corn so that's a big thing so it needs to be um you know majority corn which is you know a good percentage in life you know you always want your life to be 51 percent corn <laughs> that's just a good general rule it's like if you're going to have cereal in the morning, make sure it's 51% cornflakes. If you're going to, uh, you know, have a chicken pot pie, make sure it's 51% corn. It's just a good rule to live by, 51% corn. <laughs> I don't know. Mama Q says, bourbon is made out of dreams, drops of Jupiter and fairy dust. That is the truth. That's all you need to know. Made out of fairy, like Jupiter and fairy dust. I like it. This uh, this owl is starting to look uh, pretty good, in my opinion. It's really challenging to do these eyes, by the way, because like you want to get it dark, <clears throat> but you have to be careful to get your lines so that they uh, don't don't end up just becoming like messes. But I like how these eyes are turning out. How are we doing on time? We're coming up on two hours, so I'm probably going to have to end this soon. Um, but I can go for a few more minutes. I think we made pretty good progress, though. Like, there's some details that I have to work out, but um, I think this is a good start. Hey, there's Ida. Okay, cool. Yeah, we were just talking about you earlier, uh, Ida. We were talking about some of our younger artists who uh, pop in here. Oh, and there's Hater as well. Cool. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin really knows his bourbon. So you guys listen to him. So he says 51% uh, corn, 
uh, then a mix of barley, rye, and wheat. So they're probably, um, well, even, even on this uh, bottle here. So it even talks about, you know, baked American pure, seared French curvet, French, I don't know. This, this, it's kind of blended from, uh, from there. But uh, Kevin knows this stuff. And, and then he says, aged a minimum of four years. So that's where it's being aged in those, um, those, bur uh, those uh, charred oak barrels that I was talking about. So that's how you get your bourbon. Banana moonshine. <laughs> you can make moonshine out of anything there, uh, Bill Gorman. Yeah, it doesn't take much to... Uh... Now, I know there are some younger people in the uh, audience. So what I'm working on here is I'm working on a, uh, a bottle of bourbon for a commission that I was um, uh, given where I was asked to recreate some of my coffee paintings to go as a label on that bourbon bottle. This is not an endorsement of drinking bourbon. You guys are too young. Do not be drinking bourbon. Uh, wait until you're older. I just wanted to throw that out there. Since we do have some younger people in the audience. Like, you guys can wait. Like, you know, everything we're saying that's great about bourbon and stuff, it'll still be there years from now. Drink coffee. Coffee is good for you. Coffee is... An excellent substitute for bourbon. I um I honestly don't know like what the actual bourbon people will think of coffee art like, because theoretically they make, they do make like coffee flavored bourbon like yeah like bourbon and coffee do actually mix very well together so I don't know if um they are into that or not. Um, but we'll find out, you know, I, I think it'd be kind of cool to talk to the people at Maker's Mark and just see what their take is on, on this art. I would love to, I, I just want to know how people receive my art, you know, like, um, if, uh, there you go. I drink juice. Thanks. Uh, Ida. <laughs> Get me off the hook there. I don't want to be corrupting people. Um, I, I would love to know how the people at Maker's Mark themselves, um, receive this art, like. Um, I don't know if it's being shown to them or if it's just being put up for auction and they never see it. I don't, I don't know how that works. I guess they would have to see it because again, 10, 10 of these, uh, bottles, hopefully mine, mine makes the cut, but maybe not 10 of these bottles are actually going in their museum. So I assume at some point they're judging them. Bourbon people will probably love the coffee. There is some coffee flavored bourbon that is really good. Like, again, you know, bourbon's not for everybody, but for those uh, who like bourbon, um, it goes well with all kinds of things. So, like, bourbon coffee, bourbon syrup, uh, basically anything that you can sweeten, bourbon goes well with. Bourbon's just good to put in anything. I love bourbon syrup. Bourbon syrup is the best. Wow, 19 people, that's awesome. Um, thank you, uh, Ida. Yeah, like... I would love for this, uh, for, for one of these bottles to make it into the museum. That would be kind of cool. Oh, you mean 19 people watching the show? Yeah. Um, there are 10 bottles that end up in the museum. I thought, I thought that's what you were talking about. I'm done. <laughs> Don't listen to me. I think these, uh, these are looking pretty good. So I'm going to let this one dry. Well, I'm going to work on these feathers here. So I kind of, I, I still want to make it look like the original. So I'll show that before I hop off. Uh, we are getting at the two hour mark. So I want to be respectful of people's time, especially on weekdays. Um, but before I hop off, I do want to show you the original art that I'm making many me's out of. Like these are, these are all coffee paintings that I've done before. I've done the red stag before I've done the, uh, the owl before these are mini me versions of them so that they fit on the, uh, bottle. Um, but I'll, I will show you the originals here in a minute and you guys can judge whether or not they kind of look similar. And then I'll probably have to wrap it up just because it's like a two hour mark. Um, things that I have left to do. So this guy's looking pretty good. There's probably a few details that I need to get in here, um, which is fine. I've got time for that. 
but I'm actually happy with this guy. Whoops. I'm happy with how this guy turned out because I was really worried about him. I want to get some more of the coffee effects in down here. And by coffee effects, I mean where uh, things kind of pull and dry, kind of crusty, and you've got like the little lines of, um, you know, like this here where things have dropped through gravity and stuff. I want to get some of that going in here. Likewise over here. This guy, he needs a little bit of detail. Um, you know, I got most of the features in from the original, but I feel like there's a few little touch-ups and stuff I can do. This guy, his face is so small and there's so much detail that it's a little tough, but I'll, I'll, I'll get this working. But on both of these, I need some of that staining and I need those coffee rings, things like that, um, in order to make it match the original. But anyway, what, what are you guys talking about real quick? Uh, I don't drink, but I like watching people get drunk. Right, Steve? Yeah, I don't drink as much as, like, I only really drink when I'm doing these live streams, but um, I, I do enjoy it. Uh, I do enjoy bourbon, at least. Uh, heck, a shot of coffee and coffee, uh, a shot of coffee and coffee works surprisingly well. A shot of coffee and coffee. Oh, okay. Um, morning coffee, always Dr. Pepper, evening bourbon. I like that combination. Shot of bourbon, sorry. Okay, so a shot of bourbon in your coffee, that's a winner. Um, those are amazing, uh, talent. Uh, they're so realistic. I can never thank you, Ida. And yes, you can. I've seen your artwork. You're, you're an up and coming artist. You will do great, uh, with your career. Um, do you have any video ideas of what I should draw? Um, let me put some thought into that because like, I know that you like, um, doing, um, you know, like, um, uh, cartoons and stuff like that, but cartoons are, um, you know, just two dimensional uh, characters anyway. So I feel like you can probably branch out and do like maybe an original character. You've probably been asked to do that at some point. So I don't want to put any pressure on you, but if you could do like an original character, I think that would be awesome. And it, it could be in inspired by other people's uh, cartoons and stuff like that. But I think you're at the level where you should start branching out into your own stuff. I think that would be cool. Um, Rome dog says, looks great. Thanks, Jeremy. Ida says, uh, hey, Rome dog. Um, Bill says, uh, bird feet for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what Bill is talking about half the time. Um, but yeah, the bird does need actual feet. Um, I got pictures of a great horned owl in, uh, last year in town. That's cool. Yeah. Bill is out there where he's actually out there in, uh, the country. So that's kind of neat. Um, Ben chimed in and said, good stuff as always, Jeremy. I appreciate that. Um, Mama Q says once they have the coffee markings or, um, uh, they're going to pop. Yeah, I think that's, uh, uh, once I get the coffee styles in there, they're going to be great. So again, uh, just to recap before I hop off, um, these, uh, these pictures are this size because they're going in this area here. And then on the reverse side, I can't cover up this label, but somewhere up here, probably I'm going to have like for the, uh, owl, I'm going to have a bird in flight, the owl in flight. And, um, on the uh, deer one, I've got two of these bottles. So these are each separate bottles. For the deer one, I'm going to have like kind of a stag uh, here. So that'll make up the bottle. I got to affix it to the bottle. I got to put all the different like coffee effects in there and then we can call it done. But real quick, uh, I want to show you what these guys look like in comparison to the originals. So these are the originals. As you can see, there's like a lot of details in here that I'm hoping to get in here. Uh, I still got a little bit of ways to go. Some of these are going to be challenging just because these these um, these mini me versions are a little bit small. And then like um, you can see like where the um, the coffee rings are in there. Like if those were the actual size, those would be super small. They would be more like bottle caps. So I need to make those bigger. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good start. It, it looks very similar to the original. So I'm pretty happy with that. But anyway, I think that uh, this is probably a good stopping point because I do have some more work to do. And then, of course, I have to affix them to the bottles. I'll just uh, I'll try to document all that. I don't know how that's going to look. I don't know if that's a uh, that's like a standalone video or if that's more of a live stream or or something like that. We'll we'll see how it goes. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go and uh, stop it there. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Let me go back to this. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me again. This is a very fun project for me. Um, I'm glad that you guys are sharing with it. It's, it's a lot of fun. You know, I'm going to miss it once these uh, bottles are out there in the wild, uh, just because I've been thinking about them so much. They've been um, occupying a lot of headspace for a while, uh, just because of the logistics of it, you know, like making 
duplicating my very large copy paintings on a smaller scale, affixing them to the bottles themselves, trying to make it where you can handle the bottle without disturbing the image. And then finally, ultimately, they go up for auction to support a good cause like art in the, um, in the Lexington area, Lexington, Kentucky area. Um, it's a challenge, you know, and I'm glad that you guys are here with me, uh, supporting me on this journey. Um, I hope to do more and more of these type of projects in the future. But anyway, appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I'm not going to keep you. We're at the two hour mark. So, I, um, you know, I like to kind of rein it in around that time. But you guys have been a great audience. You guys are awesome. Definitely going to share with you guys how these uh, how this auction turns out, um, just because like it, it, it's just fun. It's interesting. So we'll, we'll share that together. In the meantime, have a good one. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Be cool. Bye.